What's going on everyone? Once again, Mohawk Matt here to bring you a fantastic conversation. And today I'm excited to have you hear from Dr. Jennifer Wolk. Jen, how's it going? Not bad, I'm glad to be here. Thanks, Matt. Super pumped to have you. And Jen here, or Dr. Wolk as I call her, is the program officer for the Naval Materials Science and Technology Division, correct? That's right. Fantastic, and that, what, what does that mean? That means that I really get to work on some really cool science and tech, really help advance how we use materials, how we advance uh, new processing technologies like additive manufacturing. Okay, and additive manufacturing for like a dummy like me, 3D printing. That's right. Correct? Yeah, so, so in additive manufacturing, uh, compared to what you normally think about manufacturing, is we're actually building things up layer by layer. So in conventional manufacturing, you're removing material. So if you think about uh, milling or drilling, you're taking yes. material out, right? That's true. And so now with additive, we're putting material on layer by layer where we need it. What I think is really cool is watching a 3D printer. I spent like two hours once watching it when I got in trouble. So I just watched the printer. <laughs> That didn't really happen. That but was your be, punishment? That, that would be, a, well, I mean, if, if you're not, if you love it, it's probably not a punishment. Not at all. Um, <laughs> but I love just watching the layers go layer by layer by layer by layer. It goes from nothing to building something. Yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's amazing what we can do now that we weren't able to do before. Let me, let me give you an example. Yeah, please. So, so let's take a look at, at this piece here. So if wow. you have if you have this kind of complex geometry, you can see some of these lattices, right? Yeah. And you can see the differences in the sides and we stack them up and we can get a very cool structure. Can you imagine actually trying to machine that like out? Trying to get some baby tools, kind of tinkering that around? Right, your little baby chisel, it'll, yeah. be, it'll, it'll be forever, right? That would take forever. Compared to the fact that we can actually put material layer by layer into this very complex design. And imagine what you can do now wow. as we look at opening that big design space. Yes. So, so that's what gets me really jazzed. That's what gets that's me awesome. really hyped up about what we could do in, in that future space, about where we can open materials, where we can open design envelopes for us to, to, to really imagine something and to really make it where we're not bound by the constraints of our systems now. Yes, that's incredible. That's fantastic. And what a, what a cool example um, to show. And I love the small details. Like cause a lot of things you see are like bigger models or and it's printed, but it's still like, oh, that's maybe you could probably put it together with your hands. That I would be absolutely floored if somebody could actually put it together. Well, and what's really cool about this is the fact that it's metal, right? Yes. And, the, and, and you see now uh, a lot of systems are out there, right? You can go to a library, you can go to an elementary school, you can see a 3D printer. And that's so awesome bringing that technology now to this generation that they're growing up with it. And now we're advancing the tech such that we can even do this with metal, right? But let's talk about that. So Jen, what I think is really cool is you kind of talked about how like students have access to a 3D printer and even your daughter has a 3D printer at home, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 I legit take my work home with me, right? And that so, is so awesome. Did Jen have a 3D printer growing up? Not, not at all, not no. at all, right? So I had, I had Legos, I had Play-Doh. I, I could build things in bigger blocks, right? Yeah. I could take pieces of wood, I could nail it together, and, and there's, there's my thing, right? Versus now my daughter can draw a, a sketch. She can extrude a shape and we can send it to the printer and bam, wow, we have a part, right? And so, so she, she really takes it for granted that we have a uh, 3D printer in our house. Does she? <laughs> she does, she does. You know, she's, it's so inherent in, in her nature um, and it's so inherent with this generation. It's pretty funny. I, I spoke at their uh, back to school, like parents, uh, what we do, job fair kind sure. of thing. And I was like, I work in 3D printing. And how many of you guys know about 3D printing? And all these kids raised their hands. I'm like, this wow. is awesome. Yeah. That's very cool. That is very cool. So Jen, how did, tell us about how you got to where you are. So you're a program officer now. Mm -hmm. And which we, as we kind of discussed, means you're in charge of like a lot of 3D printing stuff. 
for the Navy <laughs> and, and Marine Corps. I know it's more complicated than stuff. <laughs> really mainly materials, Materials. Right? Materials and processes. Yeah. Um, Again, you got to keep coaching me. I'm a layman yeah. here when it comes to this realm. So how did you get to where you are? Yeah, so, uh, so it's funny. Now they have education programs, right? They have graduate programs and undergraduate programs that talk about additive manufacturing, that talk about uh, 3D design and, and CAD drawings. Mm -hmm. and, and when I went to school, that's, that's actually not what I went to school for, wow. right? That's not, that's not what I did at all. Really? Yeah, so when I was in high school, I was really lucky to, to be able to have um, a, an ONR CF internship. So that's a science and engineering apprenticeship program. Okay. So as a, as a high school student, I got to go and work with, uh, with engineers and scientists. I got to do uh, blood research at, at uh, Walter Reed. Wow. Yeah, and that was amazing to me. That was right? unique. Yeah, and, and, and I 100% credit you know, my, uh, my, my biology teacher in high school. She encouraged me, she pushed me, she said, hey, you're really passionate about it, you should go do this. And I did. That's awesome. And so, so then I went to Johns Hopkins for my undergraduate degree. And I actually have an undergraduate degree in biomedical engineering and in material science. Okay. And so I really wanted to work with orthopedic biomechanics. And hmm. as a college student, I was lucky to be a part of the uh, Naval Research Enterprise Internship Program. Wow. So as a college student, I was an NREP over at Naval Research Laboratory. I used uh, nanomaterials to look at artificial muscles. Wow, that's yeah. pretty cool, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, so, so I have a background in metals and a background in biomedical engineering. I really wanted to, to, to look at the intersection of, of those. I was really uh, lucky to, to, to be able to have those experiences yes. and that, that really helped shape where I wanted to go. So Jane, you talked about the biomedical schooling you did mm -hmm. and the additive manufacturing and kind of going down that route. How did you get to the Navy? Like, why did you go the Navy, Marine Corps? Why did you go the military route? So, so this, this story uh, started my senior year at Johns Hopkins University. Mm -hmm. And my senior year was when 9-11 occurred. Oh. And I remember, I remember being in the university bookstore. I remember seeing the planes hit. And I remember the aftermath of that. At the time, you know, a lot of my friends were starting to join up to serve. And I stopped and I thought, how can, how can I serve my nation? How can I make an impact? And so I chose to join uh, the Naval Research Enterprise because of that, because I felt that I wanted to give back. And the best way for me to give back is to really help in that research, to make sure that folks have these advanced tools that, that we continue to push forward in the research and that we're not bounded by what was done 30 yes. years ago, but really look forward to that future to say, what can be done going forward? Yes, that's incredible. That's very powerful and that's amazing that you kind of heard that and felt that and you kind of jumped onto it. And especially, I loved when you said that your friends started kind of joining up. And myself as a Marine who served, um, a lot of people, a lot of the attention goes to the active duty military. And rightfully so, as they put their lives on the line. But without folks that did what you did, it's, you're not, we're not having the equipment we need. We're not having the, the information and the research and the stuff. So it's, it's really powerful. And I'm super, personally as a Marine, super grateful that you continue to do what you did. So it's it's funny. One of my one of my closest friends, he's a he's a V twenty two pilot, and one which of, is a helicopter, which is a helicopter. Um, and and so uh, one of the parts that was actually qualified with additive manufacturing went on that V twenty two, the Osprey. So it was a it was a pretty cool pretty cool touch point at that. That is very cool. That is cool. So Jen, tell us about this big metal that you've brought with us today. I mean, it's literally a, a, a big piece of metal, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so this is um, this is aluminum. And remember how I showed you the intricacies of what could be designed with additives. So, yes. so if you look here, 
you can see how this is designed to kind of twist around, even this big shape, right? Yes. So this is a, a piece of aluminum where they were depositing metal layer by layer. And you can see each of these individual beads. Wow. A lot of times people refer to additive manufacturing as miles and miles of weld, right? And this is just one example of it. So can you imagine now designing larger structures? You could have the intricacies of that small lattice piece, mm -hmm. and you can have very complex geometries in larger structure. So we're not bounded by the fact that we have blocks of material that we have to join together. Yes. We're not bounded by rods and T-joints and all these other things. We can think outside that box to say, what do we need it to do? And how do we design it to do that function? So what are we doing now? Like, what is the Navy involved in with Added manufacturing of materials. Oh gosh, well we have we have lots of different involvements, right? So we're trying to push the envelope about the kinds of materials that we have. Mm -hmm. um, we're pushing the envelope on the size constraints that we have. So a lot of times when people think on their hobbyist printers, they have like a little a little bread box, right? Yeah. But if you go and you go and look outside in the world. There's lots of things that don't fit into that bread box size. So we're pushing the bounds of how do we do that. And we're like, we're talking about how to make it no kidding manufacturing. I've sat on the manufacturing floor. My background after I left, uh, after I left college, um, I went to work at Naval Surface Warfare Center, Carter Act Division. And I worked in, uh, in materials, I worked in joining technology, so I was really, uh, uh, able to go to a shipyard to look at how we manufacture these huge platforms, wow. right? And the throughput that they have and the controls that they have to have something that's reliable and repeatable. And now as we talk about additive manufacturing, especially for structural metals, yes. that's what we're pushing towards is how do we make it a no kidding manufacturing process? How do we make it reliable? How do we make it repeatable? How do we build that structural part confidence? And how do we understand how this material is going to perform. How do we understand what are our properties? How do we understand what that microstructure is? Such that we really uh, give those designers these tools. Yes, that is incredible. And I can tell what I love about you, Jen, is I can tell that you just love it. I do, I do <laughs> love it, right? So, so, I mean, I could go on for, for, <laughs> <laughs> for, for a while. But, but it's so powerful to be able to, to, to look at a piece of metal, to be able to take a look at a cross section of something. You can see individual atoms. You can mm -hmm. see the patterns these atoms have, right? And, and to know that when that pattern doesn't match up, you maybe have something like a dislocation. That dislocation can lead to a crack and that drives your properties, right? Wow. So that connection from all the way to the atomic level to a big no kidding structure is, is is amazing to me. Like I, I I love I love talking about it. <laughs> yes, well, it shows. We can tell, and it, it's it's fantastic to have folks like you who just love this so much. Because if you didn't love it, you wouldn't be advancing. You wouldn't be trying to make it better. And I think it's important for us to to keep pushing those bounds, right? Yes. Because if we are if we stick with a mindset of well, this is what we've got. How do we? how do we push forward, right? And I think that as we look at the coupling of the materials to design, to processing, that's where we really start to, to advance the science, advance the technology, and open up all these options. Options that one day my daughter will completely take for granted. <laughs> Definitely, and where do, you, where do you think we're going with that? What are these 20 years, where do you think the technology will be then? You know, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have predicted the technology would be where we're at today. So, so sometimes my crystal ball isn't so great, right? <laughs> and, I, and I think that in 20 years, it's really what this generation will make of it in the next 20 years, right? Yes. So we're going to blow open this, this ability to deposit materials where we want them, yes. right? So we talk about the bespoke nature and so that ability to design for the function is where I see us going in the future. So, so right now, 
this generation is going to define where we're going to go for it because they aren't bounded by just the, the, the design space of simple shapes, and boxes and circles, yes. right? So, yes. so that's, that's where I see us going in the future. So Jen, what is it like being a woman in the manufacturing field? So, so I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes it's a, it's a bit of a challenge, right? Like yeah. I've definitely walked on a manufacturing floor and, and they converted a, a men's bathroom to say woman and that's, that was me, <laughs> right? <laughs> you had so, your own private bathroom. I, I, yeah, <laughs> at, the, at the time, right? And, and, and what is really cool though is that's changing. And that's changing because how we view manufacturing, that view is changing. And so, so the fact that, that we're, we're bringing folks into this space is awesome, right? Like I hope, my hope is that, that this next generation that, that, that moves, moves into this manufacturing field won't have the challenges I faced, yes. right? And, and some of them are as simple as finding shoes that fit my feet or <laughs> gloves that fit my hands while I struck an arc, yes. right? And some of them are as challenging as people questioning, well, does she actually know what she's talking about, right? And, and I think that this next generation, the, the, they won't face those challenges because it's becoming more commonplace. And I think that as we change our viewpoint of manufacturing, that's where we're getting that huge diversity of thought, we're getting more folks included. Definitely. And I think that that my hope for that future is that when I look across the table, that it's going to be full of people that don't look like me and don't look like each other. I think that's going to be an amazing, an amazing feat that, that I'm definitely seeing changes right now. That was a great day to see in the future. It sure. will be, it will be. And, and, and I work with a lot of students now, a lot of universities, and, and you can start to see that kind of diversity, right? And I, I, hope, I hope I inspire them the way that other people inspired me, right? I've always been very lucky in my career that I've had very strong mentors and a diversity of people to work with. And that diversity of thought, I think, really helped shape who I am today and yes. where I wanna go forward. So hopefully, hopefully I'm feeding, feeding that forward. Definitely. Well, even, even in the short nine minutes that we've known each other, <laughs> um, you've definitely been an inspiration to me. And so I really thank you for all that you do for the field. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I, I hope that, that that next generation is as passionate about their work as I am about my work. Fantastic. That's incredible. Well, you guys heard it there. Another fantastic conversation about science and technology happening inside the Navy and the Marine Corps. Jen, thank you for coming. It's really been fun having you. Oh, thank you, Matt. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome so much. Don't, don't forget, we want to know where you think this is going. What is this going to look like in 20 years? Where is the Navy and Marine Corps going to do next with this technology? What are you going to do next with this technology? Have a great day, and thanks for joining us.